Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming to my presentation. I hope it would be a little interesting for uh, you. And actually, I'm very happy that my previous presentation was about the localization of autonomous cars, so my work would be a little... I'm sorry. Ah, sorry. Ah. Uh, my work would be a continue of his work. So I'm Tehrani from Toyota Technological Institute, a research center for a smart vehicle managed by Professor Mita. So my research title is uh, Multi-Sensor Data Fusion for Autonomous Vehicle Navigation by using Adaptive Particle Filter. So this is outline of my research. First, the research goal and motivations, a little description about our autonomous vehicle. So the multi-observation data fusion model and the navigation control architecture, doing some experiment, and finally conclude the research. Uh, Anybody is angry, I think, about the accurate estimation of the vehicle, autonomous vehicle, is a key issue for especially urban autonomous driving. And especially in Japan, we have very narrow roads. Uh, when I come here and I saw the wide roads, I wish that I was in the US to do <laughs> experiment about autonomous vehicle. But at there, we have a narrow road, so it would be a little more challengeable. Also, the previous uh, uh, presentation discuss about the GPS error and also we use a very poor GPS, the normal GPS, very cheap GPS that exists in the cars. But when we do, we use, we wanted to use some, instead of one observation, we want to use different type of observation to uh, compensate the error of uh, individual observations. So in the literature, man, mainly uh, for uh, autonomous vehicle estate estimation, they use extended Kalman filter. But uh, as the vehicle estate estimation is, has strongly nonlinear nature, it's reported in the literature that accuracy of the obtained solution is not so suitable. And uh, after that, it seems that the particle filter that has keeps the nonlinear structure of the problem may be promising and uh, methods and significantly improve the system performance. So in the literature now for land vehicle estimation, they use uh, mainly for um, updating the system states, they use one observations. And there is one research in 2007, current that proposed the multiple observation, but it doesn't consider the weight for observation. Actually, we have reliability and uh, accuracy for each observation. The observation are not same. and. Also, it's changing during the experiment. Maybe some observation good and some observation become worse. So in this research, we want to have multiple observation and we considering importance weight for each individual observations. This is our autonomous vehicle, small. So <laughs> it's equipped with some sensors and actuators. Uh, so this is the sensor and actuator architectures. So we have two computers, one running in Linux for control unit and one running for under Windows for uh, data processing and environment perceptions. This is our uh, hierarchical planning and control architecture for fully autonomous driving. So the, the part now I discussed today about is about the vehicle estimation that is a key part of this total architecture for fully autonomous driving. First, I'll start with map. We have two maps. First, the local map corresponding to the uh, car body coordination system and also the global map corresponding to the local tangent plane. And we have a transformation matrix with, through the, from car body to the global and from the local to global transformation. And also for vehicle state variable, we defined, uh, maybe we have many parameters according to our problem. But now here we consider the position at the global map and orientation of the car and also the front tire angle or steering angle we can consider for this uh, estimation of the vehicle state. So different observations for land vehicle can be used. Uh, for example, such as landmark, GPS, laser scanner for scan matching, IMU odometer. And in this conference, I uh, actually impressed because uh, there are some uh, visual odometer that even we can use the stereo vision for localization. So I can add more here. 
So uh, I briefly discuss about the, this observation, sorry, I briefly discuss about this observation and then go to the fusion model. That is the main part of my research. So the landmark we use in this research are construction kind, very easy. So we have some characteristic. So for this is not so complicated. We have the global position of the landmark and also the radius corresponding to the current, uh, construction cone. So the landmark detection is a probabilistic model, so including three steps. First step, we have the laser point and then cluster by using the RBNN method uh, to make M disjoint cluster, as you can see here. And for this cluster, we uh, calculate some features very simple features, for example, number of points, circularity, and radius, and uh, position of the cluster in the global point when we have the current position of the car. After calculating these features, so we have a, a state variable for each cluster, including four parameters, and by using likelihood function, we can calculate the likelihood uh, for each cluster corresponding to the, each uh, landmark by using a multivariate normal like this. And we do some experiments to extract and tune the parameters, the covariance matrix and the mean vector of this uh, multivariate normal. For GPS, as I mentioned, first we use very poor GPS, about CEP is 2.5 meter, but mostly it's more, we have more uh, error. And then we use the WGS84, for transformation from the geographical coordination system to local tangent. And for uh, fixing some errors, and for example, from multipass, we use the gating function, and the S is here is innovation covariance of the observations. Scan matching also we use, so we have a scanner, so easily. We, uh, we have two individual scans, sequential scan, we map, we align these two maps together and we can calculate the, uh, by using the ICP, this iterative algorithm, we can calculate the transform matrix and transformation, uh, trans, uh, delta x delta y, the transpose uh, vector and transformation matrix. So it's in the literature, nothing new is, we just use it. Now I come about the how to fuse these different observations by weighing of them. So in the normal uh, model for uh, estimation, we have just one observation in the literature. But now we have, instead of one observation, we have many observations. And each of them has their individual functions and individual uh, noise. So uh, this is a diagram uh, over a Bayesian sequential model for multi-sensor fusions. So we have the estimation of the system at time t is calculated according to time t minus 1 and the incoming uh, observations at time t. But here uh, we have uh, observation importance weight. And by using this, we combine this individual observation to make one joint observations. And this system is updating at each step. So this is the particle filter, normal standard particle filter. So the state of the system is mentioned by some particles, is modeled by some particles and corresponding weight, importance weight of this particle. So and in each iteration of the algorithm, the particle is updated according to the last, uh, the previous uh, steps and the incoming the observations. But here, instead of one observation, we have joint observation. That's not only one observation. There is many, maybe, one, maybe uh, more than one observations that we have at time t. So for calculating this uh, probability, we use WMLE, weighted maximum likelihood estimation, for calculating this. So uh, this can be right as these functions. And we, for each observation, we have a corresponding weight, importance uh, weight of the observations. So if you consider this, now we have an individual observation. So this can be calculated easily from the uh, individual model of the observation. For example, if we use the Kalman filter, particle filter, or any probabilistic filter for estimating this individual observation. 
So how to update the importance weights of the observations? This is very important. So we consider that's the Markov process. So uh, any time, oh, sorry. Any time the importance weight of the observations uh, is uh, uh, can, dependent on the uh, time t minus one and also the incoming observation. So for, com for calculating that, we use the Bayesian rules and we condition it to the state of the system. This is for continuous and this is for particle filter when the system is uh, explained by some particles. As you can see here, if we have the state of the system at time t, also, we have the importance weight of the observation at time t minus 1, and we have incoming observation at time t. So this weight of the observations, importance weight of the observation, can be updated through the particle filter. So according to this equation, we change the particle filter. So, uh, in the, so the general particle filter, the belief at time t minus 1. So we have the particle and the corresponding importance weight. So we add another things the vector that is the uh, observation importance weight, and we have incoming observations, uh, for example, k observation at time t, and we have a control measurement. First, we do samples. So for sampling, uh, we can have many models. Here, just easily, we use the data from IMU and considering the corresponding noise, also the data from steering potentiometers, real, real counter, and we consider some noise and generate the samples. But here, actually, we can have for each of these parameters, we can have their estimation methods, such as Kalman filter or particle filter or AKF or anything we can have. Also, after that, for uh, generating the sample, uh, we use a simple method, but it's better uh, as a previous presentation, we use the kinematic model and we have a more tuned sample. So after sampling, we update the weight of the observations. So according to this formula, and this formula for calculating this uh, uh, conditional probability, we use the previous importance weight of the observation and the WMLE method for calculating this. And after that, we have the state of the system at time t. So after uh, having the state of the system at time t, this data is used for updating the observation importance weight, uh, importance weight of the observations. So first we calculate the, uh, for each observation, we calculate the importance weights according to the system state, and then we update it according to the one formula from the previous step and the uh, calculated observation weight importance in these states. And if it's necessary, we resample, and this would be the next step. So, so it seems we have everything for running the particle filter. So this is the autonomous vehicle navigation architecture we use. We have some predefined map in the global map, predefined paths in the global map. So the vehicles uh, use some uh, sensors and it uh, use laser scanner for environment perception for detection object and landmark. So this data is coming to the particle filter for positioning and then used for pass planning, driving commands, and steering control. Actually, this part is explained by my colleague in the poster presentations about the uh, pass planning and uh, steering control of the autonomous vehicle. This is the root pass we did. This is about a rotary course, 220 meters. We have two landmarks here, the start points. And we did some experiments. So this is the ground crew we have. By, we recorded by RKT GPS. And we do the simulation. So this, these are the particles, the green one. The uh, purple is the GPS data. And the blue one is odometer IMU. And the red one is the joint particle filter. And the black is a scanning matching. So if you consider here, now we detect a landmark, so the system is updated and continuing. Actually, for a scan matching, we found that it's not suitable and the worst result for outdoor environments. So we think that maybe a scan matching would be not be suitable for outdoor application because we have sparse data and we did this experiment actually for relatively high speed and so maybe 
the scan matching cannot align two uh, maps together. So, but now we are thinking to improve the scan matchings, and it would be very good observation for improving our methods. So this is the positioning error for X and Y directions, and it's, it seems a little improved. And this uh, is the positioning uh, error analysis for average error in X direction, Y direction, and maximum error in X and Y, and also the return form, because we do this experiment for the rotary course. So it seems the particle filter with joint observation model can improve the individual uh, observations when they have more error. So this is the diagram for importance weight of the observations. So you can see it's changing and adapting. So actually here is the main issue about the initialization of the weight of the observations. So for example, landmark is a very suitable and very accurate observation. So we make it here very high weight. But, and also the IMU odometer, but the GPS is maybe not so reliable, so we make it first, but start and then drop. I conclude my research, so we have adapted a particle filter to fuse different observations. So we think that now the, maybe the autonomous car have more sensors, so for one state maybe we have different observations. So, but these different observations have their reliability and their accuracy. So we should find a model to combine and integrate these different observations. We use WMLA methods for a Markov process for estimating this joint observation model and we did some experiment. For future research, we are trying to optimize this importance rate of observation and doing some uh, mathematical analysis about the divergence or some range of this observation's weight. And we did experiment actually for 2D dimensional. So we are now going to, actually next month we should finish about three, 3D uh, uh, for estimation of the vehicle for 3D that is much more complicated. And also using the digital map to improve the results. Thank you.